To me, when I'm reading a good book, it's almost no different than watching a movie. I know in reality, I'm just staring at a page with symbols on it and hallucinating things, but it's such a good feeling to be enveloped in a story. On the contrary, a story which breaks immersion with me is equivalent to someone smashing my TV. It's jarring, annoying, and in the context of a novel, it just might frustrate the reader enough that they'll give up reading. In this series, I will cover the many ways a written work can break immersion with the reader, and I will also cover remedies and patches that you can apply to fix these instances when editing. Let's start with the unanchored pronoun. According to the Copy Editor's Handbook, an unanchored pronoun is the use of a pronoun or pronoun phrase when it is unclear which noun the pronoun refers to. Sorry to dump literary jargon on you this episode, but if you can't remember what a pronoun is from high school English, I'll give you a quick refresher. A pronoun is a word that can function as a noun phrase used by itself and that refers to either the participants in discourse or to someone or something mentioned elsewhere in the discourse. So to put it in English, a pronoun is basically words like I, you, he, she, and it. So the major problem with the unanchored pronoun is that sometimes when a writer uses he, she, or it to describe a character instead of their name, it might not be completely obvious who the writer is referring to. Take this for example. Jess and Angela went for a walk. She stopped to smell the roses. As you can probably tell, the problem here is that it is impossible for the reader to determine which of the two characters, Jess or Angela, made an effort to stop, and it's this confusion that will break immersion. Let's look at a similar example. Grape soda, grape candy, and grapes. This never tasted good to Angela. The problem here is that the reader isn't quite sure if Angela dislikes all grape flavors in general or if she's just referring to one or two of the grape flavor items. Again, this causes confusion. Now, in my opinion, this problem probably occurs most when a writer is trying to limit themselves from using character names too much, and they forget to signal who or what is the topic. Variation is good, there's nothing wrong with using pronouns, but since they don't definitively indicate what specific person or thing, it's a writer's job to make sure the readers know what's going on and who is doing what. Let's go back to our examples and see if we can fix them. To fix, simply make sure that you clearly identify what the subject of your sentence is and be more specific when describing it alongside pronouns. Our original was, Jess and Angela went for a walk. She stopped to smell the roses. The fixed version could be, during her walk with Angela, Jess stopped to smell the roses. Or if we include the pronoun, Jess went for a walk with Angela, and she stopped to smell the roses. And indicates that it is the second action Jess is taking along with walking with Angela, so as the subject, uh, the pronoun belongs to her. Jess is the one doing things. I'm fairly confident I have that right. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. As for the other example, the original was grape, soda, grape candy, and grapes. This never tasted good to Angela. The fixed version would be grape soda, grape candy, and grapes never tasted good to Angela. Or grape soda, grape candy, and grapes. This trio never tasted good to Angela. So that's how you fix an unanchored pronoun and how to avoid breaking immersion with your reader. I hope when you edit you'll keep an eye out for this mistake. It's a pretty painless one to fix. Thanks for watching.